Hello, this is Dr. Mark Tater. I'd like to welcome you to the Gateway Aesthetic Institute and Laser Center, where we're going to talk about the treatment of acne scars with the Taylor Liberator Acne Scar Subcision Instrument. Today we're going to follow this patient who has come in for treatment of acne scars. Uh, typically, the most common type of acne scar is the rolling acne scar, and we are going to treat this patient today for rolling acne scars on both cheeks and also on the temples. First step here is to cleanse the skin with an antiseptic cleanser, uh, such as Hibiclans, chlorhexidrine, and we're going to then uh, elevate her and put on harsh lighting where we mark the depressions and the scar irregularities with a permanent marker. This will guide us in the rest of the treatment. Also, we outline the area where we are going to do laser resurfacing as part of the acne scar treatment procedure. Here you can see, again, the harsh lighting and some additional marking of lesions uh, in other areas of the skin. This step in the procedure is a light chemical peel done with a 20% TCA. Uh, we then use tumescent anesthesia to inflate the scarred acne areas with a dilute local anesthetic. This accomplishes three things. It inflates the skin to move the skin up off blood vessels and nerves, gives complete anesthesia, and also good hemostasis. This is done with a spinal needle and an infusion pump, similar to the one that is used uh, for liposuction. Here you can see us continuing to, to mess the chin and cheeks. This is a very important procedure and is important to, to mess right below the dermal subcutaneous border to elevate the dermis off from blood vessels and nerves. Here we have a close-up of the Taylor Liberator uh, Acne Scar Subcision Instrument. Uh, it has three tips that are blunted with notches to catch the scar fibers. Uh, this instrument uh, has gone through multiple different versions and is introduced into the skin through a small puncture site in the sideburn that allows us access to the cheeks and also to the temples if they are involved with acne scars. In this subcision procedure, we want to stay right at the bottom of the dermis at the top of the subcutaneous so that we're not down deep into any of the areas of important blood vessels and nerves. The subcision instrument is also curved so that we can go around the curvature of the cheek. You notice I'm reversing the curve up and down as I go across the cheek and onto the various areas of the cheek, chin, and temples. You can actually physically feel the scar bands popping and the patient will hear this popping sound similar to what one of my patients described as a dog chewing on a bone. Here we're going up onto the temple to release a couple of rolling acne scars that are on the temple in this area. This procedure normally takes us uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes to complete the subcision of the entire side of the face for the average patient with rolling acne scars. We then draw blood to obtain platelet-rich plasma. We use the Eclipse uh, system for this, uh, drawing uh, blood and then spinning it down to obtain the platelet-rich plasma. The next step is uh, doing fractional resurfacing. We use uh, two different types of lasers. Here we have a fractional uh, Photona SP Dynamis laser where we're doing uh, six passes, uh, three with VLP and two or three with LP standing for long pulse and very long pulse. Uh, this is done in this manner, overlapping six passes, usually only three passes on the jawline because of the higher risk of scarring for that area of skin. Uh, going over this multiple times uh, allows us to loosen up the scarring, blend the normal and the abnormal skin so that we get a much smoother texture at the end of the procedure. Here you can see us individually treating some scars on the chin. Uh, these types of scars sometimes we will subsize with the no core needle instead of the Taylor Liberator because of the limited reach onto the chin from the sideburn area. Here you see 
a video of the Fraxel repair laser. This laser is used in lighter skin patients. Uh, also does a very nice job accomplishing essentially the same thing as the fractional erbium, but is used only in the skin types one through four because of the slightly higher risk of hyperpigmentation when using CO2 versus erbium. Uh, we treat all skin types with the erbium, including skin types five and six. The most important thing after this treatment is total sun avoidance until the skin has returned to normal color to reduce the risk of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. We cool the skin with ice saline and sterile gauze to absorb any blood and transudate from the procedure. We allow that to soak for a few minutes. Here you see us applying PRP under plastic wrap. This is allowed to soak in for about 15 minutes. We lay some sterile cooled saline gauze over this to apply additional cooling and then expose the skin to 810 nanometer diode light. This reduces the swelling and also accelerates the healing process. Here we are applying a thin layer of clindamycin 0.5% in plastibase. We have this compounded to reduce the risk of antibiotic sensitivity that may occur with other topical antibiotics. After the antibiotic, we apply a thin layer of CeraVe healing ointment or Banaply. This provides an occlusive covering to the skin while healing.